Hi there, I'm Cyril Brin, your friendly neighborhood content strategist, and I'm so happy that you're here for this little mini course. I'm going to show you how to plan, outline, research, and write your articles, which is going to be super important if you're starting out as a freelance writer. Let's get right into this thing. Okay, so if you look at my screen, you'll see that I'm starting off with something called a content brief. A content brief um, is basically a piece of, um, it's basically a roadmap. I give these to my, to my, um, writers because I'm a content strategist. So I put these together. I give these to my writers to make sure that they are writing, that they, that their writing is on topic, right? That they are creating the kind of content that we want them to create and create and that they're focusing on the things that they need to focus on for the article. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to, I'm, I'm just going to walk you through the content brief and give you some idea of what this looks like, what it's for and what it kind of shapes out into. Okay, so let's go through the sections. The topic is pretty self-evident. Um, it's usually the topic or, or a title of the proposed article. The big idea is why the content is being created. For every piece of content that gets created, there needs to be a reason why. So either something happened in the industry, like Elon Musk bought Twitter and turned the company upside down, or um, it's just time to update the update a piece of content or update like industry stats or something like that. So let's say every year you write... Um, your, your client puts out um, a holiday trends post. And so every year without fail around August or September, that trends post has to be updated and go live. So there, there should always be a reason for, um, a reason why you're creating a particular piece of content. The next section is the basics. Now the basics encompasses a couple of different areas. So we're just going to go one, it encompasses a couple of different areas, so we're just going to go one by one. The first thing is the type of article. Um, one of the most important pieces of, like, parts of, one of the most important aspects of creating a piece of content, specifically an article, is knowing what kind of article that you need to create for, for the topic. So typically, I will outline this, but there there's a way for you to, to kind of figure out which one you need to do if you are not provided with a content brief. So... The first type of article is called a listicle. A listicle is basically a numbered list um, of people, places, or things. So that might be like the 15 sexiest men alive, something like that, right? It's going to list 15 people, maybe have a couple of honorable mentions thrown in, but it's basically a numbered list. The second type the second type is a news article. News articles tend to be shorter. Um, they also have a shorter lifespan because they are based on trending information and the latest updates. The next one is going to be a research article. A research article provides um, is is a way of um, basically researching a topic using third party data. So that means that it's just like what you did, like when you were in school, you would um, it's the opposite of a science project. Right. So you would research papers and you would have to um, cite all of these credible sources and that kind of thing. So that's a research article. Whereas original research would be more like a science project where you yourself are conducting the polls or doing the experiments or asking the questions, conducting the studies, and then you um, aggregate or gather all of that data, analyze it, and then you publish it and release it out to the world so that other people can see it, right? So that's what original research is. Um, the next one is a strategy article. Think of this as like how-to content, um, how-to or um, tutorials, that kind of thing. It provides readers or viewers with actionable content, I mean, actionable steps that they can take to uh, accomplish a specific goal or to do a, a, a particular thing. Roundups. Roundups are basically lists. They're not numbered lists, but it's like, it's like putting a bunch of things of a similar category into a group and talking about them. So you could do a roundup of um, African influencers, right? You know, top African influencers. And you can have as many as you want on that list. Or you can do a roundup of influential Gen Zers. Or you can do a roundup of the best restaurants in Texas or whatever the case may be. So it's like a listicle in that it's a, it's a gathering of group. It's gathering a group together or documenting a group of like um, similar things, but it's not numbered. The final one is opinions. Um, this is actually a really big one in our industry right now. Opinion pieces or thought leadership pieces. That's when an, someone who's an expert in a field or someone who has a lot of experience with a field um, talks about the current environment framed within the context of their expertise, right? So if someone were to, um, one of my favorite thought leadership um, series right now is Ray Dalio's uh, New World Order content that he's putting out on LinkedIn, right? And Ray Dalio is is um, a financial expert. He is considered to be one of the greatest minds in the world as it relates to economics and finance. And so he 
put out this um, this series of articles on LinkedIn that talks about what's happening in the current economic e environment um, within the context of what's happened in history and kind of provides us with like a, a roadmap of what where we're going and kind of what we should do. Right. So that's what um, opinion or thought leadership pieces are. Word count is important. Different pieces of different topics require different word counts if you're putting together an article. Right. So if you're writing an article or if you're writing a creating a piece of content on how to tie a tie, that's not going to be a 2000 word article. Right. Nobody needs to read 2000 words in order to figure out how to tie a tie. Chances are you're going to have a diagram, you know, three pictures shows like how to do the knots or different types of knots or maybe a chart that has different types of knots on it or maybe a 30 second or one minute video. Um, but it's not going to be a 2000 word article. So for every topic that you write about, there is an ideal number of words just kind of based on what people are reading um, that you would want to that you would want to stick to. And the way that you know how how long that is, it's actually covered later later in this um, video. But that's basically just by looking at your competitors, like who for the topic that you're researching or the topic that you're writing on, how long are the posts of the people who are or, or the publications that have already put out content on this topic? Okay, target customer um, or audience is important because let's say you're you're creating a piece of content about the top toys for a particular holiday season. Well, even though the toys are for the kids, that content isn't really for the kids, right? That content is for grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles, that cousins, that kind of thing, whoever's going to be making the purchase decisions. So um, your target audience, knowing who you're writing for is important. The next one is intended result. Intended result is what you want the reader to do after they read your article. Do you want them to download a guide? Do you want them to opt into a list? Do you want them to schedule a call? Do you want them to just keep reading different articles on your website and just kind of rabbit hole from topic to topic? What do you want them to do? Because that's gonna, um, knowing that it's gonna help shape your article as well. Similar content. Similar content is pretty straightforward. Um, it it kind of goes back to knowing like what the other people in the space are or write are writing on so that you can find voids, openings, that kind of thing. So for instance, one of the um one of the, the the examples I like to use is that one of the most popular questions that you'll find on Google around influencer marketing and working with influencers is how much does it cost? But it's not very it's not super simple to answer that question because there are a lot of variables that affect the cost of an influencer marketing campaign and how much influencers cost, like what platform is it on? How, you know, how, how large is the influencer's audience? How much engagement do they get? Like, you know, there, there are a lot of different things that impact um, what the final price is for how much an influencer charges. So what you'll see is a lot of people or a lot of publications have put out articles on like, on the topic of how much an influencer charges, but they hardly ever answer it directly. So if you're looking at that and you're going through and seeing who else is written on the topic and you realize that nobody has answered the question, like it makes sense for you to either answer the question or create a tool that will help people answer the question themselves, right? And so that way you know what the voids are in the market and you can you can also understand what, what kinds of content um, Google is is showing around that topic because Google makes its money based on being able to show people the right kind of information that they need when they need it. That's how they're able to get advertisers to pay them, you know, to show up in Google search results because there's this promise that, oh, we're going to show you to the exact right people exactly when they're looking for you. So Google is only going to favor the content and uh, display the content that is going to meet the searcher's need, right? So you want to make sure that you know what kind of content Google is displaying for a particular topic so that you can make sure that your content meets that that need that you see being met, you know, with Google search results. Okay, so the next one is links and anchor text. Um, these are really important um, links, uh, or also consider outbound links. Um, I will talk about that in later in another video. But outbound links are links from your website to a site that has as much authority or more authority than yours. So it's it's you telling your readers and you telling the search search algorithms that hey, this, you know, this piece of content is well thought out. I have consulted with people who have more expertise than me or publications who have more expertise than me. These are the ones that I'm linking out to. These are the the ones that I consulted about writing this article and here it is, right? The other kind of um, link that you need is an anchor text link. That's how you get people to rabbit hole on your on your um on your blog or your or your website or your client's website is because you'll have links from your article to another article that's on a related topic to another article on a related topic to another article on a related topic and that person can go from from article to article on your website to just find out everything they can about a particular topic okay so 
Next, keywords to target. Keywords are a funny little thing. Um, keywords are basically the the one or two words or the one or you know the phrase or the sentence or two that can be used to sum up the entire point of your article, right? So if you're writing on CMOS, then um, it would be like your keyword would probably be CMOS or CMOS drinks or CMOS benefits or something like that. Something kind of broad that just kind of like everything that you've written about in the article kind of is encompassed within that topic. So for instance, the 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 examples you see here are holiday spending, holiday trends, small business Saturday, Black Friday, Cyber Money, give, Giving Tuesday, right? All of this happens around, like all a lot of this happens around Thanksgiving time, like right after Thanksgiving, but it all has to do with holiday, like holiday shopping and like retail for the holidays, the big, the big year end holiday retail event, right? Okay, so that's what a keyword is. It is the one or two words or the phrase that sums up what your article is basically about. Possible section headings. Okay, so the the primary goal of the content brief is to provi provide you with a roadmap for what you will write about. Um, it also includes who you're writing for and how long the article will be and what words you need to include in there. But this section is the is the meat and potatoes because it will basically outline the topics that need to be talked about within your article. And I'm going to show you. Actually, I'll do that in another video. So that's how you find out what topics you need to talk about in your article um, is really just by doing um, Google um, Google research, like just, just researching the topic and seeing what shows up. So I'm going to show you this really quickly. This is a completed, a completed um, outline. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you'll see the topic is here. We talk about the the um the the big idea like okay so we don't even want, want, want to use phrases like take CMOS. this article is designed to right that's the big idea this article is designed to and so it's written in a way that focuses exclusively on some of the more utilitarian benefits of CMOS, right uh the basics are all covered here right 750 to a thousand words we want them to sign up for the newsletter um here are some um, similar content that you want to outrank. And then if there are any links that you want to link to or any anchor links that you want to use, I would typically list that here. And then keywords to target. This topic is Irish CMOS benefits. So the keywords to topic to target here would be Irish CMOS benefits, CMOS uses, CMOS, uh, Irish CMOS and brain function, CMOS for skin, CMOS benefits for hair, that kind of thing. And then the possible sections, right? These came from, let me just do something really cute. Irish sea moss benefits. Boom. So this list right here of what's going to be talked about. Okay. So this section is actually just coming from search results. So what are the benefit? What are the health benefits of Irish sea moss? Talk a bit about how it's been used over the millennia, right? So these came from search results. So if I type in Irish sea moss benefits, What are the benefits of Irish CMOS, right? So all of that stuff ends up showing up in here. Let's see what else we have. What does CMOS do to the body? Irish CMOS benefits for skin. Uh, Irish CMOS benefits for hair, for immunity. Best way to use Irish CMOS for overall good health, right? And if we go kind of look down here, all of these things are going to end up showing up in here. Irish CMOS benefits and side effects, warning side effects, Irish CMOS gel, gel, uh, how long does it start take to start working in your body? What is it good for? Can you take it every day? All of these little things that come up. Oh, let's look down here. Um, I receive most benefits for women, um, side effects, benefits for men, all of this stuff. And a lot of that stuff, as, as well as the things that show up under people also ask if you click these little tabs, more of these topics will come out, right? So the topics that go in here, under the possible headers actually come from what you're seeing in here. People also ask, will it help with sleep, benefits, how do you cleanse the body, that, that kind of thing. So that's where it comes from. And you just kind of point it in the direction that you need it to go. And that's basically how you do a content brief. Stay tuned.